Well, here we are. We're in week 11 of the uh, 1970 uh, NFL season replay here in Pro Strategy Football 2023. Again, available on Steam uh, for purchase, and we're using a uh, historical season, one of the many available uh, as a free download from the uh, mod community. So, uh, doing a quick recap, let's look at the uh, standings. After week 10, we have uh, the St. Louis Cardinals with an 8-2 and two record uh, leading the uh, NFC. And uh, they have the best overall record in the NFL right now in the replay. We have a tie between Detroit and Minnesota at 7-3 uh, and three in the uh, NFC Central. Uh, Los Angeles uh, with the lead there in first place in the uh, NFC West with a 7-2 and 1 rec record, excuse me. In the AFC, uh, we've got a gaggle of three teams in the uh, AFC East vying for first place. The uh, Jets, surprising Jets, Baltimore and uh, Miami all kind of clustered together there. Uh, in the Central Division of the uh, AFC, we have Pittsburgh uh, in first, but with Cincinnati nipping at their heels. And then out west in the AFC, we have Kansas City and Oakland. Uh, they are uh, separated by a half game. Denver looming a little bit there in the background. But I think it's probably going to be a come down to these two teams in the uh, AFC West. Uh, looking at some other interesting records, Cleveland uh, has won two in a row and they're starting to climb back into it, but it may be too little too late for them. Uh, Boston, uh, they got their first win in week nine and then uh, lost in week 10, so they're back on uh, the losing end of things. Uh, New Orleans, uh, they can be uh, a, a team that Looks like they could be in it, and then they uh, they just fade, and they and that record reflects that they just fade out. Uh, one and nine record for them, losers of uh, seven in a row. Green Bay is uh, now at the bottom of the uh, NFC Central, along with the Chicago Bears. But uh, Green Bay has gone through a four-game losing streak, and then of course there is the. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, the enigma of uh, the replay season, uh, a team with tons of talent on both sides of the ball, and they are mired in a forgettable season, 2-7-1, and one. they've lost three in a, in a row, uh, and are pretty much out of it at this point. Sorry, I backed out of that uh, too far. Okay, let's look at our week 11 schedule. And looking at the games that we have today, uh, we have Miami uh, heading up north to Atlanta. Looks like it's going to be a rainy day in uh, Atlanta Stadium. Chicago uh, will be taking on Baltimore. Boston... Uh, heading into Buffalo, that'll be another rainy uh, day there. A little on the chilly side in War Memorial Stadium. New Orleans travels to Riverfront Stadium to play the Bengals. And then we uh, have Green Bay heading into Dallas. Yeah, a few years earlier, this would be a marquee game of the week. Right now we have two struggling clubs. Meeting in the Cotton Bowl. Oakland heads north to uh, Detroit to take on the Lions in Tiger Stadium. That's going to be a chilly day there. Denver travels to the Astrodome to play the Oilers. Uh, the San Diego Chargers, uh, losers of three straight. They're heading into uh, Kansas City to play the Chiefs. Minnesota. Heads to Shea to take on the uh, New York Jets. 
Cleveland Browns. They'll be uh, playing the Pittsburgh Steelers in uh, Three River Stadium, and that's going to be a, a very chilly game, 28 degrees. Los Angeles goes to uh, Northern California to take on the 49ers in San Francisco. It'll be rainy day there as well. Uh, we have another Philadelphia-St. Louis matchup, this time in Bush Stadium. And then lastly, uh, the Giants travel to uh, RFK to take on the uh, Washington Redskins. So let's simulate these games. And like usual, we'll look at the uh, highlights together. I have not seen the score, so I don't know who won, who lost. Uh, but uh, we will uh, find out together here as we go through the highlights. So our first game, Miami in rainy Atlanta. 227 in the first. Bob Barry hands off to Harmon Wages uh, to convert a... Uh, Fourth and short to keep their drive going. Looks like it stalls out and uh, Vineyard comes in to uh, kick the field goal and that one goes uh, wide left. We're now in the second quarter, 252. Garrel Upremian, he's going to try a field goal on the uh, dirt infield. And in that, uh, in that mud, he is, uh, he's good. Got good footing. We're at the uh, end of the first half. Harmon Wages takes off, fumbles the ball, and uh, Miami recovers and run it down to the one-yard line. Miami is set up to get some points here, and they can't punch it in. But Oh, the, wait a minute. They're going for a, oh, a fake field goal. John Stofa, the holder, hits Mar Fleming in the uh, end zone. Touchdown, Miami on the uh, fake field goal. We're now in the third, 11:41, and Yepremian misses that one. It's a no good attempt for 23 yards. Our score is still 10 nothing. Still in the third, uh, Larry Zonka turns the corner and uh, fumbles the ball. Atlanta recovers. Now we're in the fourth. Vineyard trying another field goal, and that one looks a lot better. And it is good, 24 yards. Ken Vineyard gets Atlanta on the board. The score is now 10 to three, Miami. 348 in the fourth, and Cannonball Butler gets through the Miami defense and runs that ball in for a touchdown. So we have a tie game with 342 left. Kickoff to Miami. Mercury Morris going up the sideline. He's by one, by two, by three. Uh, he's, oh, he is by uh, all of the Atlanta uh, defenders and he is off a, that's uh, a huge, a 100 yard uh, kickoff return by Mercury Morris. Touchdown Miami, extra point is good. In thrilling fashion, the uh, Dolphins get a 17-10 victory over the Atlanta Falcons in rainy Atlanta Stadium. Manny Fernandez is your MVP. Six tackles and a sack. Boy, that uh, Mercury Morris 100-yard kickoff return. What a thrill. But yet, what a heartbreak for... Uh, Falcon fans. Here's your game stats. Now looking at Miami, uh, Bob Greasy's day, 12 of 23, 154 yards. No touchdowns or interceptions. We do have uh, John Stofa, the uh, second string backup quarterback who was uh, the uh, holder for Garo Yerpremian on that field goal attempt and Don Shula goes with a uh, fake field goal and Stofa delivers with a uh, three yard pass to Marv Fleming for the touchdown and the uh, 
Miami rushing game today. Jim Kick with 48 yards. Larry Zonka fumbled the ball away to Atlanta. Uh, receiving. Jim Kick, uh, again, 51 yards uh, receiving. Mark Fleming had that uh, short three-yard touchdown pass from uh, Stofa. Total offense for the uh, Miami Dolphins today in uh, rainy Atlanta. Looking at the uh, Dolphins defense, big day for Manny Fernandez. Six tackles, three for loss, one of those is a sack. Jake Scott and uh, Jim Riley, they had sacks as well for the Dolphins. Garo Yupremian, he uh, missed that one field goal on the uh, rainy playing field. Uh, otherwise, he was uh, good today. Larry uh, Seeple, eight punts. Uh, longest one was 51 yards. Mercury Morris, uh, one kick return, and it was uh, a decisive kick return. 100-yard return for a touchdown to seal the game for Miami. And uh, punt return numbers for the Dolphins today. Let's look at Atlanta and a losing effort. Uh, Bob Barry, 19 to 41, 230 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Cannonball Butler had uh, 50 yards rushing today and a touchdown. Looking at receiving Jim Mitchell, 94 yards for the Falcons. Cannonball Butler, 51 yards out of the backfield. Uh, Atlanta's total offense today in a losing effort against the uh, Miami Dolphins. Looking at Atlanta's defense, uh, Tommy Nobis, uh, 11 tackles, 2 for loss. Uh, Glenn uh, Condren with a sack. Claude Humphreys, this is his second game in a row where uh, he got a sack. This is his only tackle of the day. Uh, Greg Lenz, he uh, recovered the uh, Zonka fumble. Vineyards Day, uh, very, very much in line with uh, Igaro Yerpremian. I think the uh, wet field uh, affected that one field goal attempt, but otherwise a good day for him. Lothridge uh, punting, uh, 48 yards was his longest, eight punts, and he put uh, five of the eight in the inside the 20. Sonny Campbell and Cannonball Butler, uh, kick return duties today. Mallory and McCauley returning punts. Well, the Dolphins uh, edge out uh, Atlanta 17 to 10. Now we head over and uh, we're going to be in Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Chicago, and the Colts. Bears and Colts. 4.33 in the first. Unitas back to pass. He hits Roy Jefferson, and Roy Jefferson is in the end zone. Touchdown. Uh, Unitas to Jefferson. That will put Baltimore up 7-0. We're in the second quarter now. Jim O'Brien. He'll knock that one through to increase the uh, Baltimore lead. We're now looking at 10-0. We're in the second quarter, near the uh, end of the second quarter. Unitas is driving the Colts down again. He's back to pass. He looks. He finds Eddie Hinton, and Hinton is in the end zone. Uh, touchdown, Unitas Hinton, 25 yards. And uh, they are pouring it on the Bears. We're in the third. O'Brien. And O'Brien will put that one through the uprights to extend the uh, lead. We're now 20 to nothing. Baltimore. 8.57 in the fourth. Unitas finds Eddie Hinton again in the end zone for a short touchdown pass. Extra point is good. 
Finally, a Bears highlight. Concanon back to pass. And no go. They were trying to uh, convert a long fourth down. And uh, no good. Well, uh, with 244 in the fourth, Concanon back to pass. And Jerry Logan sees that one coming a mile away, steps in front of it, and uh, the Colts have the ball. With just seconds left in the fourth, O'Brien good again, kicking off the dirt uh, infield there in Memorial Stadium. He'll increase the uh, margin of victory. It's now 30 to nothing, Baltimore. And uh, Seymour gets the pass out of bounds. And that is the end of the highlights for the game. And Baltimore thrashes the Bears 30 to nothing. Johnny Unitas is your MVP. Good day for the, the veteran. The immortal Johnny Unitas, 25 to 33, 277, three touchdowns. And as you can see, uh, Baltimore dominated this game. Let's look at the uh, Chicago numbers first. Concanon, uh, not a good day for him. 9 of 30, 135 yards and an interception. They were just, they could not get anything going against the, uh, the tough uh, Colts defense. Chicago's rushing, not much on the ground. Ronnie Bull only with 21 yards on nine carries. And, uh, yep, there's some action uh, in the air for the, uh, the Bears, mostly trying to play catch up. 63 yards for uh, George Farmer, 48 yards for Dick Gordon. And not much to write home about when it comes to offense for the Chicago Bears uh, getting shut out in Baltimore. Bears defense, busy day for them. Uh, Dick Buckus, 13 tackles and a sack. Willie Holloman, he got two sacks. Uh, no, no kicking attempts for Chicago today. Bobby Joe Green was punting a lot. Eight punts. Smith and uh, Turner in kick returns. Smith and Cole punt returns. Let's look at the victorious Baltimore Colts. Big day for uh, Johnny Unitas. 25 to 33, 277. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked three times for uh, 21 yards, but a good day for uh, Johnny Unitas and the Colts. Looking at the rushing yards, Jerry Hill, he steps up, 71 yard day for him. And uh, Unitas was uh, slinging it today. Eddie Hinton, 87 yards. Roy Jefferson, 76 yards. Jimmy Orr, the veteran, got uh, almost 50 yards in uh, receptions. Eddie Hinton, two touchdowns. And Roy Jefferson, uh, one touchdown. Baltimore's uh, total offense numbers in their uh, shutout of the Chicago Bears at home. Looking at Baltimore's defense, uh, Mike Curtis leads the way with six tackles, Jerry Logan an interception, and uh, Ted Hendricks, uh, the mad stork, he collected a sack. Jim O'Brien, absolutely perfect today. David Lee, he wasn't too busy. And uh, Duncan and uh, Ron Garden uh, on kick returns. Only one uh, return for 31 yards. Garden and uh, Rick Volk returning punts today in the Colt victory over the Bears.
Next, we move on to Boston and Buffalo. We got some more rain there. It's kind of chilly at 33 degrees. Let's go to the rock pile and uh, see, can Boston get another victory? Well, beginning of the first, Cap throws to Nance, and uh, Jim Nance turns the corner and he is hit. Coughs up the ball to Buffalo. Buffalo has great uh, field uh, location here, and uh, the drive will stall, but Guthrie will kick a 23-yard field goal to get Buffalo three points. Buffalo with the ball. Dennis Shaw is picked off by uh, Don Webb. So uh, the Patriots get it at the Buffalo 36. What will Joe Cap do with the uh, turnover? Can he uh, get the Patriots in the end zone? He's back to pass. He avoids the uh, sack. And he hits Ron Sellers. Touchdown, Boston. Boston's up 7-3. We're now in the second. Gino Capaletti, the leading scorer in uh, AFL history. He kicks it through uh, 13 yards, and that will uh, give Boston a 10-3 lead here. But uh, at the end of the second quarter, Shaw looking for Haven Moses, and he gets Haven Moses. Touchdown, Buffalo. We have uh, a tie game if they hit the extra point, and oh, they missed the extra point. 10-9, Boston. Oh! And Cap is picked off uh, here with two minutes left in the first half. Can Shaw uh, capitalize here? Well, Shaw back to pass, and he uh, turns it over. Turns it right back over to Boston. We're now in the third. 12-13. Shaw back to pass. He's looking, and he finds O.J. Simpson. And Simpson is going along the sideline, and he is in for a touchdown. 39-yard touchdown reception for O.J. Simpson will extend the Buffalo lead. We're now 16-10 Buffalo. And uh, Shaw is picked off in the uh, fourth quarter. Boston has, uh, well, they don't have a chance there. They don't uh, get anything out of that turnover. Your final score, Patriots 10, Buffalo 16. The Bills get a victory at home in the rain. O.J. Simpson is your MVP. Good day rushing, 104 yards, and on a decent day uh, receiving out of the backfield, 43 yards and a touchdown. Looking at the uh, game stats, Buffalo... Uh, Buffalo really had the advantage today. Looking at Boston's uh, numbers, Joe Cap 15 to 24, 195 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Was sacked three times. Jim Nance, 42 yards rushing, but he did uh, fumble twice. One of those was recovered by the Bills. Ron Sellers with a good day, 66 yards and a touchdown reception. Bake Turner, he uh, he had 91 yards receiving. And Boston's total offense numbers uh, today in a in a loss to Buffalo. Chayuski, uh, he had a busy day, 17 tackles and interception. Hunt uh, had a sack. Don Webb and Larry Carwell, they uh, picked up uh, interceptions as well. Gino Capaletti was good on all of his kicks today. Janik, he uh, punted six times, longest was 42 yards. Lawson and Garrett uh, returning kicks. Garrett and Blanks uh, returning punts in the uh, loss to the Bills. And uh, Buffalo, let's look at their numbers. Uh, Dennis Shaw, 19 to 31, 
226. Two TDs, uh, three interceptions. OJ Simpson had a big day with 104 yards. And uh, let's see, Wayne Patrick, he uh, showed up with 25. Looking at receiving, we have Marlon Briscoe, 71 yards. Haven Moses, 92 and a touchdown. OJ Simpson, 43 yards in receptions and a touchdown. Bills total offense in their victory over the Boston Patriots. On defense, Jim Dunaway, eight tackles, three for loss. One of those is a sack. Mike Stratton, the uh, captain, he gets a sack as well. Al Cowling's a sack. Pete Richardson, uh, an interception, and Paul Guidry, he scooped up the uh, fumble. Guthrie's day, he missed that extra point earlier uh, in the game. Paul McGuire had four punts on the day. He had two of those inside the 20, which were touchbacks. I kill and Glenn Alexander returning kicks. Far and I kill returning punts, just fair catches for Buffalo today in that department. All right, now we're uh, off to Riverfront for the Saints and the Bengals. Nine thirty-four in the first, and Dempsey is lining up a chip shot field goal, which he uh, punches in. It's good. New Orleans draws first blood, three nothing New Orleans. Late in the first, Horst Molman. And Molman misses that one wide right. Two twenty-five in the first. The uh, Saints are backed up on their end zone, and uh, Chumsansk tackles Billy Kilmer for a sack and a safety. Cincinnati gets two points. We're now in the second quarter. Horst Molman punches the uh, short field goal in. Cincinnati's up five to three. A really odd score. Eleven twelve in the second. And Ken Avery picks off Billy Kilmer, and it sets up uh, Cincinnati here to get some points. Virgil Carter drops back for Cincinnati. He's avoiding the rush. He's got Speedy Thomas, and Speedy Thomas is in the end zone. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Cincinnati up 12-3. Billy Kilmer hands off to Barrington on the uh, one yard, uh, yard line, and they can't get the ball in at, on four attempts. We're in two minutes left in the first half. Kilmer driving uh, the Saints down again. He finds Kenny Burrows. The uh, looks like the Cincinnati defensemen ran into one another, and uh, easy touchdown for uh, Burrow. We're now in the third quarter. 12-14, and uh, Jess Phillips runs in for a five-yard Cincinnati touchdown. Scores now 19-10 in the third. And Bob Trumpy comes, to, oh, and he came down with the ball, made a move, fumbled it, and New Orleans recovered at the 11. That drive is stopped by New Orleans. 5-42 in the third. Billy Kilmer, he's looking. He's got Danny Abramowitz, and uh, Abramowitz is off to the races and in the end zone. Touchdown Saints. 42-yard pass from Kilmer to Abramowitz. We're now in the fourth. Jess Phillips, he gets in the end zone again on a one-yard run to extend Cincinnati's lead now, 26-17. Kilmer gives to Elijah Pitts. Pitts is hit at the line. And uh, coughs the ball up at, at the 48-yard uh, line. 
Molman with a field goal attempt, and that one goes uh, right through the uprights. 29-17, Bengals over the Saints. Saints forced a punt with four minutes left, and oh, they blocked it. Cincinnati blocked it, and it is down at the New Orleans 14. Virgil Carter gets him down to the two, hands off to Jess Phillips, and uh, Jess Phillips is in the end zone. Touchdown Cincinnati, and uh, it is a route now. 36 to 17. And that is going to be your final score. Cincinnati really whips the New Orleans Saints in Riverfront Stadium 36 to 17. Steve Chomzansk, eight tackles and five sacks. Big day for uh, the uh, Cincinnati uh, defensive tackle. And of course, with that score, Cincinnati really did dominate the game here in the final game stats. They were all over Billy Kilmer. Looking at New Orleans uh, numbers, Billy Kilmer, 20, uh, 33, 269 yards, two, two TDs, was sacked six times. Rough day for the veteran. Looking at New Orleans rushings, Elijah Pitts, the, uh, the veteran, uh, 57 yards rushing. Did cough up a fumble that was recovered by the uh, Bengals. Looking at the uh, New Orleans receiving, big day for Danny Abramowitz. 140 yards uh, receiving and a touchdown. Al Dodd, 72 yards. Kenny Burroughs had that one 18-yard catch where he uh, basically just walked into the end zone after the two Cincinnati defensive backs ran into one another. Here's New Orleans' uh, total offense numbers and a losing effort against Cincinnati today. Looking at New Orleans' defense, uh, Jackie Burkett, 10 tackles. Richard Neal had the sack. Joe Scarpatti, he uh, picked up the uh, one fumble. Dempsey's line today, he was, uh, he was good. Fagan's punting line for uh, today uh, in the loss to Cincinnati. Dodden Burroughs returning kicks. Dodd and Lions on uh, punt returns. Let's look at the uh, victorious Cincinnati Bengals. Virgil Carter, 15 of 28, 171 yards. Touchdown. No interceptions. Good day uh, for Virgil Carter. Jess Phillips had a monster day. 161 yards of rushing, three touchdowns. Looking at Cincinnati's receiving. Chip Meyer, 77 yards. Uh, Speedy Thomas, he did have that one uh, touchdown reception. And uh, total offense for the victorious Cincinnati Bengals. Might see uh, see them uh, either tie or surpass the uh, Steelers today for first place in the AFC Central, depending on the outcome of the uh, Steelers game. On defense, big day for Steve uh, Chomzansk. Eight tackles, six for loss. He had a safety. One of those was uh, of his uh, five sacks on the day. That is a huge monster day for the uh, Cincinnati defensive tackle. Ken Avery, interception. Royce Berry, sack. Al Bocamp, he uh, picks up a uh, interception as a uh, fumble. And Horst Molman, a uh, very typical day for him. David Lewis didn't get much action today. 
Parrish and Robinson uh, returning kicks. And the punt returners for the Bengals, uh, Johnson and Parrish. Uh, Johnson had a 14 yard, that was his longest return of the day, which was his only return. Well, with that, Cincinnati comes out with a big victory at home. Now we go to uh, the interesting game in the Cotton Bowl with the struggling Green Bay Packers playing the uh, struggling and enigmatic Dallas Cowboys. Let's go to the highlights. All right, 13-24 in the first, and Bart Starr is picked off by his former teammate, Herb Adderley. Adderley uh, runs it back to the Green Bay 31. Craig Morton under center for... The Cowboys, he's looking, he's got Lance Retzel, and uh, Retzel is in the end zone for a 13-yard touchdown. And uh, here we are in the first uh, quarter, and Dallas is up 7-0. Still in the first, Morton driving the Cowboys down the field, and uh, Fred Carr picks him off. And Fred Carr is heading downfield, he's chugging down there, and he gets to the Dallas 23. Fred Carr intercepts Craig Morton. And unfortunately, Green Bay can't do much with it. We have a field goal attempt, and uh, that one is no good. No good for uh, Green Bay. S score is still 7-0, Cowboys. We're still in the first, Dwayne Thomas. He is tackled, coughs up the ball. Seems to be a problem uh, for most of the uh, Dallas running backs. And the Packers convert the uh, turnover into three points and get on the board. 7-3, Dallas. We're now in the second quarter. And Clark misses that one just over the uh, right upright. Score remains 7-3. Waning minutes of the second quarter. And, oh, he missed a chip shot. 10-yard attempt, and Clark misses that one wide right. Wasn't even close. Now we're in the third. Craig Morton back to pass. He hits Bob Hayes, and bullet Bob Hayes is in the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys. See if they can get an extra point, and they do. 14-3, Cowboys over the Packers. Donnie Anderson runs up the middle and fumbles the ball. Dallas picks it up in midfield. The Cowboys, are they going to convert it into points? Oh, and he missed again. Clark misses again. 14-3, fourth quarter. Dallas has the lead. Bart Starr driving the pack downfield with 927 left. And he hits Carter, and Carter is in the end zone. Mike Carter, 25-yard reception from Bart Starr. Field goal is uh, extra points good. 14-10. Dallas. Green Bay is uh, making a game of it. Down by one score. Dwayne Thomas. He's cutting up the sideline. He's tackled and he fumbles the ball. Green Bay with great field position. Bart Starr. Hands off to Donnie Anderson, and Donnie Anderson runs it in for a touchdown to take the lead in the Cotton Bowl. Green Bay takes the lead with 7.37 left in the fourth. Cowboys are looking. Craig uh, Morton hits uh, Lance Rensel, and he fumbles the ball after catching it. And Green Bay recovers. We're at the end of the fourth. Dallas is out of timeouts, and that is a wrap. The Packers come in and get a 17-14 victory over the Cowboys. Fred Carr is your MVP. Looking at the uh, game stats, uh, you know, you look at that and go, Dallas should have dominated that game and won. 
but they come up short. Bart Stars Day, 10, 10 of 20, 132 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Donnie Anderson got 46 yards and a touchdown on the ground. On receiving, Mike Carter, the lone touchdown reception for the Packers today in the uh, Cotton Bowl. Total offense for the Green Bay Packers in their uh, victory over the Cowboys in Dallas. On defense, uh, your MVP, Fred Carr, nine tackles, uh, an interception, and a fumble recovery. Uh, Fred Carr gets lost in all of the uh, dismal years in the 70s uh, with the Packers, but he was a really, really good linebacker. Real good linebacker. Doesn't get his due. and doesn't get the... Uh, Notoriety that he probably deserves as a uh, really outstanding linebacker in the 1970s. Uh, Bob Jeter, uh, he recovered a uh, fumble as well. Jim Carter got a uh, sack. Uh, Livingston, he uh, missed a field goal and it seems like he misses a field goal or two every game. Donnie uh, Anderson punting, another good day for Anderson punting. So the uh, triple threat, receiving, running, and punting for, uh, for the Packers. Larry Krause and Ken Ellis uh, each return to kick today. Uh, only Ken Ellis uh, had a, a chance to return a punt. Well, let's look at the uh, Dallas numbers and a disappointing loss, another one. Uh, Craig Morton, 15 of 26, 170 yards, two touchdowns, interception. Not a bad day for uh, Craig Morton. Dwayne Thomas got 123 yards on the ground, but he cannot hold on to the ball. It's like every game he's fumbling the ball, and it seems like the ball is recovered by the opposing team. Calvin Hill had an additional 42 yards on the ground. Mike Ditka, 52 yards in our receiving yards today. Hayes and uh, Renzel each uh, 49 and 47 yards, but they both had the touchdowns. Renzel again uh, fumbled the ball away to uh, Green Bay. Total offense for the uh, Dallas Cowboys in their loss to the Green Bay Packers at home in the Cotton Bowl. On defense, uh, again, a tired unit this this far into the season. They've been on the field a whole lot with just the inability of the offense to sustain drives. Uh, Leroy Jordan is your uh, leader in tackles with 11. Uh, the great Bob Lilly, he uh, shows up as usual, seven tackles, four for loss. Jethro Pugh picked up a sack. George Andre picked up a sack. Herb Adderley, the former Packer, picked off his uh, former teammate Bart Starr. And Bob Lilly also uh, gobbled up a fumble as well. Mike Clark missed all of his field goals. What could have been. Uh, Ron Whidbey, uh, only three punts today. Looking at uh, Dallas kick returners. Hayes and Renfro uh, with uh, punt return duties today and a loss to the Green Bay Packers. Well, that'll do it for uh, our game in the Cotton Bowl. It was a uh, perfect game uh, condition, 69 degrees, clear skies, not uh, too windy at all. 
And uh, Cowboys at home. This this one, uh, you think uh, it, it should have been 20 to uh, 17 if uh, Clark would have hit those two field goals. But again, Dallas finds a way to uh, snatch uh, defeat from the jaws of victory, this time against the Packers. All right, now we move on to uh, Oakland, traveling to Tiger Stadium to take on the uh, Lions. 8.38 in the first, and we have an Errol Mann field goal, and this one is a long one. And he, uh, it's good. 45-yard attempt. That'll get Detroit on the board. 3-0 Detroit in the uh, first quarter. But uh, Daryl LaMonica, he's got the uh, Raiders knocking on the door, and uh, Hewitt Dixon runs it in. Four-yard touchdown run will uh, put Oakland up 7-3. Still in the first. Landry held, hands off to Mel Farr, and Mel Farr gets the first down and more, and then fumbles after being tackled. Oakland collects it at the 44. We're in the second quarter now. Dixon again, handoff from LaMonica, and he's in for a touchdown. Oakland is uh, now up 14-3. Still in the second, George Blanda. Blanda boots that one right through the uprights to add three more points to the Oakland tally today. 17-3. Greg Landry, he's back to pass. Oh, and he's picked off. Intercepted by Kent McLaughlin. That kills that Lion drive. LaMonica back to pass. And uh, Lem Barney sneaks in and just snatches that one out of the air, setting uh, the uh, Detroit offense up, and uh, they can't do anything with it. Errol Mann trying a field goal, and uh, that one goes wide. Late in the uh, third. We're now in the fourth. Landry has uh, the Lions near the goal line. He hands off to Melfar, and uh, Melfar turns the corner in for the touchdown. Extra point is good. 17-10 Oakland uh, in the fourth quarter. Landry back. He's scrambling, he's scrambling. Oh, and he gets caught in the end zone. He's sacked. Tony Klein gets the sack and the safety. Scores now 19-10, Oakland. And that's how we'll end this game. 19-10 is your final, Oakland over the Detroit Lions. And here's your game stats. Jarrell LaMonica for the Raiders, 15 to 22, 158 yards, no touchdowns uh, for the Mad Bomber today. Uh, one interception. Charlie Smith, he led the way on the ground for Oakland, 61 yards, but uh, Hewitt Dixon, two touchdowns. Receiving for Oakland, Bolitnikoff with 60. Raymond Chester, 45 yards. Warren Wells, 26. Total offense for the uh, Oakland Raiders today in their victory over the Detroit Lions. Looking at the Oakland defense, Gus Otto got eight tackles to lead the way. Big day for Tony Klein. Four tackles, three for loss, two sacks. One of those was the uh, safety. George Blanda's line today, uh, the veteran was uh, was perfect. I shied, uh, only punted four times, but got two of those inside the 20. Longest was 45. 
Wyatt and Atkinson uh, doing kick returns today. Only two kick returns uh, for Wyatt. Uh, no punt returns, just fair catches uh, for Oakland today in their win over the Lions. Now let's look at Detroit. Greg Landry, nine completions out of 18 attempts, 69 yards. No TDs and an interception and just a horrible quarterback rating. However, uh, Melfar, 83 yards and a touchdown. Alti Taylor got 52, and Greg Landry uh, scrambled for an additional 25. Not much in the air. Uh, looks like now uh, the uh, Lions are kind of turning into a one-dimensional team on the ground be with that running game. Total offense for uh, Detroit in their loss at home to the Oakland Raiders. Detroit, uh, their defense today in their loss to the uh, Raiders. Paul Numoff, uh, 10 tackles, 2 for loss. Joe Robb got a sack. The great Lem Barney, he uh, got the interception. Jim Mitchell, 4 tackles, 3 for loss. Errol Mann, uh, not a bad day for him. Could have used that field goal that he missed, though. Herman Weaver only punted twice. And looking at the Detroit kick returners, they only got three chances to return punts and uh, not much there. Len Barney and Nick Eddy returning punts. Each one got to return a punt. Uh, longest return was by Len Barney for 10 yards. And with that, uh, we will head out of Tiger Stadium and go to our next game. And our next game is going to be Denver heading to the uh, Astrodome to play the uh, Houston Oilers. With that Oakland uh, victory, kind of seeing how things will set up here with Oakland uh, and Kansas City. Denver. Maybe Denver can sneak into second place with the win. 9-12 in the first. Liskey under center for the Broncos. And on the uh, fourth and short, uh, they go for it and uh, it is incomplete. 7-09 in the first. Liskey hands off to Floyd Little. And Floyd Little hits the line. He is stuffed and coughs up the ball at the uh, 34. Houston recovers. 13-41 in the second. Liskey back to pass. He's on the 15. And he hits Whalen. Whalen is in for the touchdown. And that will put Denver on the board. 7 to nothing. We're in the uh, still in the second quarter here. Jarella gets Oakland or uh, Houston on the board with a, a field goal 7-3 Denver Halfield for Denver with 8 seconds left in the first half he will add 3 points making the score Denver 10 and uh, Houston 3 we're in the third quarter Halfield at 840 in the third he will kick through another field goal to uh, make the score 13-3 Denver Charlie Johnson back to pass and he is picked off by Greer who uh, runs it back to the 27 and uh, Denver will stall out Howfield he'll kick that one through to uh, make the score 16-3 Late in the third, Charlie Johnson is picked off by uh, Bill Thompson, who returns it to the Houston 45. So we'll head into the fourth quarter here, 16-3 Denver. Outfield with another field goal. We'll make it 19-3 in the fourth. 
734 in the fourth. Charlie Johnson back. He's looking downfield. He's got Jerry Levias, and Levias is in the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. It's now uh, looks like it'll probably be a uh, nine-point game. A minute 42. Johnson back to pass. He's got good protection. And he just misses Jerry Levias, just off of Levias' uh, fingertips. Good defense by Charlie Greer. A minute 21 left in the game, and Hallfield, he misses that one. But at this point, uh, Denver can afford that. Okay, last chance for the Oilers here. And, uh, nope, Charlie Johnson's picked off. Carl Cunningham uh, returns it to the Houston 18. And uh, Houston's out of timeouts here as we get to the end of the uh, game. And uh, Denver gets a 19 to 10 victory over the Oilers in the Astrodome. Paul Smith is your MVP for the Broncos. Five tackles and three sacks. And a pretty dominating day uh, in the stats column for the uh, Denver Broncos over Houston. Denver. Uh, Pete Liskey's day today, 11 of 18, 176 yards and a touchdown. Good day for uh, Pete Liskey. Floyd Little had a decent rushing day, 83 yards. Hafner led uh, Denver in uh, receiving yards with 65. Jim uh, Whalen, he was the one that received the 15-yard uh, touchdown pass. Total offense today for the Denver Broncos in their victory in the Astrodome against the Houston Oilers. Looking at Houston's defense, Forsberg with six tackles, Paul Smith, five tackles, three for loss, all of those were sacks. Greer, Thompson, and Cunningham, each with interceptions, and uh, Tombstone Jackson ends up with another sack. Orange Crush defense uh, came to play. Bobby Howfield uh, was a great day for him. He missed a field goal, but late in the game when uh, Denver was far ahead and there was very little, if any, chance for uh, the Oilers to come back. Billy Van Heusen's day, punting, another uh, typical day for him, only three punts. Bobby Anderson and Bill Thompson, uh, only one kick return for 21 yards for Anderson. Punt returns, uh, one return for Thompson, uh, but uh, three fair catches overall for the punt returners for Denver. All right, let's look at Houston. Charlie Johnson, 15 to 27, 175 yards, a touchdown and three interceptions. So a rough day for uh, the veteran quarterback. A uh, rough day for Houston's rushing attack. Only 22 yards uh, for Joe Dawkins. And uh, Houston receiving. Jerry Levias, he tops out 83 yards and a touchdown. After that, it uh, not much at all. Denver's defense was uh, showed up today and really uh, put it to the Houston offense. Houston's defense, uh, George Webster, 11 tackles today. Uh, Elvin Bethea got another sack. Uh, Tom Domeries, he uh, recovered that uh, Floyd Little fumble. Roy Jarella, uh, another good day for him. Spike Jones, his day uh, punting for the Oilers and their loss to the uh, Denver Broncos. Jerry Levias, he had a 28-yard uh, kick return. 
and Levias and Richardson, uh, their punt return uh, totals for the day. So with that, we'll uh, leave the Astrodome. Uh, Houston fans go home disappointed. Another loss. Uh, Denver fans happy. Waiting to see the outcome of the uh, Kansas City game. And speaking of Kansas City, Kansas City is hosting uh, the Chargers. Windy day in uh, Kansas City, but otherwise uh, not a bad day for football. 402 in the first, and uh, Gerald Wilson back to punt. Oh, and it's blocked. Wilson recovers, but uh, they uh, recover it at the uh, Kansas City 38, which will set the Chargers up. John Hadel back to pass. He's got the great Lance Allworth, and Allworth runs it in for a touchdown. Hadel to All Allworth, 28 yards, and that'll put San Diego up 7-0. We're now in the second quarter. Len Dawson matriculating the uh, Chiefs down the field, and he hits Morris Stroud, and uh, the gigantic tight end makes his way into the end zone. 25 yards, Dawson to Stroud, and that'll tie the game at seven. Still in the second. Hadle back to pass, avoids the sack, and uh, misses Garrison. Minute 12 in the first half. Partib to punt. He's punting out of his end zone. Ed Podolak collects the uh, punt and uh, runs it back and fumbles the ball. Oh. Well, with 12 seconds left, can, uh, no, San Diego cannot extend their, uh, cannot extend the lead. Wide right, no good for uh, Mike Mercer's attempt. We're now in the third quarter. Mercer again, trying a field goal. And that one uh, goes the same route as the first. Wide left, the score is still 7-7 here in the third. We're now at the start of the fourth. Hadel hands off to Jeff Queen. He turns the corner and fumbles the ball. Yeah, it's on the 11. Kansas City is set up for a score. Dawson. Hands off to Podolak, and Ed Podolak is in the end zone for Kansas City. They turn that fumble into points and go ahead 14-7 in the fourth quarter. Mercer again. That one's good, and they're going to get a flag for running into the kicker. Mercer looks like he's okay. Now at the end of the fourth quarter... And uh, Foster collects the pass and is hit, fumbles the ball. Kansas City recovers. Dawson goes on a sneak, uh, gets the first down, and then fumbles the ball. San Diego gets the ball back on the 22. Score is still 14-10 late in the fourth quarter. And the Kansas City Chiefs eke out a 14-10 uh, victory at home over the San Diego Chargers. Ed Podolak, big day for, for Podolak, can do it all. Rush for 122 yards, he can catch passes out of the backfield, and he can throw a pass. Plus he returns uh, kicks. All right. Your uh, final game stats. San Diego's numbers in the losing effort here. John Hadel, 18 of 47, 191 yards, one touchdown. John Hadel is slinging it today. Looking at the uh, rushing numbers for San Diego, uh, Dickey Post with only 33 yards on nine, nine attempts. Receiving. We have Lance Allworth with 62 yards and a touchdown.
San Diego's total offense today in their uh, loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, San Diego's defense, uh, Pete Barnes, eight tackles today. Uh, Bob Briggs, big day for him, four tackles. All, three of those were sacks. Bo Camp picks up a, uh, a fumble. Mercer's day, uh, missed two field goals, didn't help uh, San Diego's cause. Dennis Partee, six punts today. Fletcher and Speedy Duncan. Uh, Speedy Duncan didn't get anything on kickoffs. Only a 30-yard 30, 30 return for Chris Fletcher. And uh, not much on the punt return front for the uh, San Diego Chargers in the losing effort. Let's look at Kansas City. Well, Len Dawson, 8-19. 102 yards and a touchdown. Not big numbers for, for Lenny. Podlack, he uh, completed one of a uh, halfback pass for 10 yards. Ed Podlack, 122 yards rushing today and a touchdown. Again, an underrated and underappreciated, uh, talented running back in his day. Otis Taylor, 63 yards uh, receiving, leaning the way. Morris Stroud. The towering tight end of uh, Kansas City had one uh, reception, but that was a touchdown, 25-yarder. Total offense today, uh, you can almost say it was all Podolak. Kansas City defense, uh, Jimmy Marsalis, eight tackles. Willie Lanier, six tackles, two for loss. Aaron Brown got a sack. And Willie Lanier uh, gobbled up uh, that uh, Jeff Queen fumble. Jan Stenerud, he was just kicking extra points today. Joe Wilson, he had eight punts. One of those was blocked. Longest was 53 yards. Podolak got an, another 44 yards uh, to his tally for today in uh, kick returns. And 13 more uh, returning punts. The man can do it all. Well, Kansas City uh, will keep ahead of uh, Oakland and uh, Denver with that win at home. Now we're off to Shea Stadium where the uh, Purple People Eaters are heading in to uh, play the Jets. 10-18 in the first. Gary Quazo under center for the uh, Vikings. And he hits Jim Lindsay for a nine-yard touchdown pass to give uh, Minnesota an early lead, 7-0. 545 in the first. Woodall hands off to George Knock, and he fumbles the ball. Alan Page picks it up and is... Takes it down to, it looks like, about the 14-yard line. That's setting uh, Minnesota up for uh, a score. Let's see what they can do here. Quazo hands off to Dave Osborne. And, oh, Osborne fumbles and Tannen recovers. So, uh, Minnesota just gives it right back to the Jets. We're now in the second. Fred Cox, he'll kick that one through. Now we're at uh, 10 nothing Minnesota. Still in the second, 7:34. Another Fred Cox field goal. And Minnesota is up 13 to nothing. Late in the uh, first half, another Fred Cox field goal is good. Fred Cox, is, uh, his leg is the uh, one that's getting the scoring done for Minnesota. Jim Turner with 20 seconds left in the uh, first half. He'll miss that. No good uh, wide left. So it looks like uh, 
Minnesota will go into the second half up 16-0. Al Woodall hands off to Emerson Bo uh, Boozer, and he gets the first down on that fourth and short. Weeb Eubank going for it. He's got to get some points. 246 left in the game. Woodall back to pass. He finds Rich Caster in the back of the end zone. Five-yard touchdown pass. Woodall to Rich Caster. And uh, that gets New York uh, on the board. 16-7 Vikings. Last gasp for uh, the Jets. Woodall. He avoids the uh, sack and heaves it downfield. Hoping for a miracle. And uh, no miracle today for the Jets. Emerson Boozer can't hold on to the ball. And Minnesota comes out with a 16-7 victory over the uh, New York Jets and Shea. Good day for Gary Quazzo. He's your MVP. Minnesota with uh, good performance today uh, against the Jets. Gary Quazzo, 16 to 28, 183 yards and a touchdown. Good day for Quazzo, who uh, is actually a dentist. So he uh, has, uh, during uh, when he played for the Vikings, he had his practice in uh, Minneapolis. Dave Osborne, good day on the ground for him, 111 yards. He did, uh, however, fumble the ball up uh, to the Jets. Uh, killing a uh, scoring drive. Gene Washington and Bob Grimm. G uh, Gene Washington, 52 yards. Bob Grimm, 62 yards. Uh, Jim Lindsay, he only had one catch, and that was the touchdown, the nine-yard touchdown pass from Gary Quazzo. Total offense for Minnesota today in their victory against the Jets. I'm sorry, it just seems like uh, either my mouse is sensitive or the game's a little sensitive here on these uh, these arrows. Uh, Minnesota defense, Carl Kosalki, seven tackles. Carl Eller, he got a sack. Uh, Alan Page recovered that fumble and uh, ran it back a little bit to set up a uh, scoring opportunity for the Vikings. Fred Cox, a uh, good day for the veteran kicker. Uh, McNeil had seven punts, uh, put three of them inside the 20 and uh, two of those, and two were touchbacks. Jones and Charlie West, uh, well, nothing for them on kick returns today. Charlie West had a 35-yard punt return. Let's look at the Jets. Al Woodall uh, filling in for the uh, injured Joe Namath. 17 to 35, 189 yards and a touchdown. Not a bad day for, for Al Woodall. And in uh, 1970, uh, five games into the season, Joe Namath broke his uh, wrist. And uh, Al Woodall was your primary quarterback for the bulk of the season, which is why you're seeing Woodall uh, instead of Joe Namath. Not much on the ground for the Jets, which, of course, against that front four that Minnesota has, that's not a surprise. And receiving... Don Mater, 41 yards. Emerson Boozer out of the backfield, 47 yards. Rich Castor had the touchdown reception. Total offense for the New York Jets uh, in the loss at home to the uh, Minnesota Vikings. And uh, the Jets defense, uh, Mark Lomas, nine tackles. Same as with Al Atkinson. Uh, we have Steve Tannen recovering the fumble. Jim Turner, uh, well, he wasn't very busy, but uh, would have been nice if he could have made that field goal. Steve O'Neill had a very busy day with nine punts. 
Uh, seven of those inside the 20, two of them were fair caught, uh, one touchback. Mike Battle had three returns, uh, longest one was 31 yards. Battle again, uh, three punt returns, longest was eight. Okay, well, Minnesota gets out of New York with a 16-7 victory over the Jets. Let's see what that does to the uh, standings in the uh, AFC East. Now we move on to Pittsburgh. Uh, Cleveland, winners of two in a row. The Browns are uh, starting to kind of put it together against the uh, Steelers in Three Rivers Stadium. 32 seconds left in the first quarter. Terry Bradshaw under center for the uh, Steelers. He hands off to Preston Pearson. And Pearson's in the end zone. Touchdown Steelers. Late in the first. 7-0 with uh, 3.18 in the second quarter. And Gene Mingo is going to try a field goal. And that one misses. And the, uh, the veteran Gene Mingo is just not uh, getting the job done for the uh, Steelers. Still in the second, uh, near the end of the first half, Bradshaw fires a pass and hits Fuqua in the end zone. Four-yard touchdown pass, which will uh, give Pittsburgh a 14 to nothing lead. We're now in the third. Bradshaw rifles that one in. That was a tight window. Uh, Two-yard touchdown pass, Terry Bradshaw. We're now late in the third quarter, and uh, Bill Nelson... He's got Fair Hooker, and uh, Fair Hooker has a touchdown for the Browns. 36 yard reception for a touchdown by Fair Hooker. We're now in the fourth. Bradshaw has the Steelers on the doorstep, and Preston Pearson is in the end zone again on a trap play up the middle. Three yard touchdown run. Puts Pittsburgh up 28 to 7. And uh, trying to. Convert a uh, fourth down. Bill Nelson cannot connect with Gary Collins. Ball back to uh, the Steelers. And uh, Fuqua. He uh, fumbles the ball at the Cleveland 47 with two minutes left in the, uh, in the game. 21 seconds left. And uh, that will be your ball game. No more highlights after that. And the Steelers get a uh, victory at home, 28 to seven. Preston Pearson, a big day for him. 21 rushes, 127 yards and two TDs. And I have to say, uh, Terry Bradshaw looked pretty good today. And a dominating performance by uh, the Steelers at home. And Bill Nelson, his day for the Browns, 15 to 29, 202, and a touchdown. And the uh, steel curtain was lowering the boom on Leroy Kelly and Bo Scott. Uh, receiving, your leader today, Fair Hooker with 82 yards receiving. Gary Collins said 72. Fair Hooker had the touchdown catch. Total offense for Cleveland, which uh, what offense they had was in the air. They were just not getting anything done on the ground against that uh, Pittsburgh defense. Looking at Cleveland's defense, uh, Dale Lindsey had 14 tackles. Uh, the Browns did not record a sack or an interception today. Uh, they recovered one fumble. Don Concroft, he only got in for a uh, extra point. He was punting uh, pretty frequently, seven punts. Morrison and Homer Jones uh, kick returns. Morrison and shown uh, nothing on the uh, punt return side for Cleveland today. 
And Pittsburgh, let's look at their numbers. Uh, good day for Terry Bradshaw, 18 to 29, 206 yards, two TDs. He did not turn the ball over. He was sl he was uh, playing the gunslinger today, and uh, he uh, didn't turn the ball over. So Chuck Knoll's going to be happy about that. Preston Pearson, 127 yards rushing and two touchdowns today. Johnny Fuqua, uh, he tosses in 86 yards of uh, rushing today as well. So good day on the ground for the uh, Steelers. Looking at uh, Pittsburgh's receiving numbers, Ron Shanklin, he uh, leads with 80 yards. You have Johnny Fuqua with a touchdown reception and Dennis Hughes with a touchdown reception. Pittsburgh's total offense, which uh, pretty much is going to be a lot of uh, ground and pound with Pearson and Fuqua. On defense, Andy Russell, he ends up with uh, eight tackles and a sack. Chuck Hinton, he ends up with uh, a sack as well. Joe Green gets into the uh, act. He gets a sack. No interceptions. Gene Mingo, uh, well, he, good on extra points, but man, uh, it's like every game he is missing field goals. That is just killing Pittsburgh. I mean, some of these games, they could have been won if he would have hit just half of his field goals. Bobby Walden, his day punting today. Staggers and Blunt with uh, their kick return duties. Only Staggers got some action. 33 yard uh, was his longest return, which was his only return. And uh, Hubie Bryant got to return the ball twice, and uh, one of them was a fair catch, and the other one just no yardage. Now we're in our last three games of week 11. Uh, the Rams and the 49ers in rainy, soggy Kizar Stadium. See if uh, the 49ers can make up some ground on the Rams. Well, 7.53, and uh, they're already in the end zone in the first quarter. Ken Willard runs up the middle, four-yarder. That'll put San Francisco up 7-0. We're uh, at the end of the first quarter. Brody looking looking to pass, and uh, I think Clarence, uh, Clancy Williams picks that one off at the uh, Los Angeles 2, stopping that drive. We're in the second quarter now. Bruce Gossett gets that one through in the rain. That'll be 10 nothing here in the second quarter. Uh, 49ers, Roman Gabriel, and that slips out of his hands and is picked off. And uh, Gabriel does make the tackle on uh, Mel Phillips, but he returns it to the Los Angeles 19. Bruce Gossett kicks another one through. Score will be 13-0 San Francisco. We're at the end of the uh, first half. Roman Gabriel, he's got the uh, Rams down there, and uh, he throws another interception, this time to Jim Johnson. Another scoring drive killed by a turnover. Gossett pumps that kick through, extending San Francisco's lead 16-0. We're in the third quarter. Gabriel, back to pass. He's got Billy Truax, and uh, it looked like the uh, the 49er defensive back slipped, and Truax is in the end zone. 56-yard catch and run for Billy Truax. 16-7 is your score. Uh, Willie Ellison runs the ball in with 9.56 left in the game. That's going to tighten things up. 16-14 San Francisco. Eight minutes left, Roman Gabriel hits Willie Ellison and he turns the corner, fumble. <coughs> San Francisco has the ball at the 34. Costly turnover by the Rams. And 
And once again, Gossett will get that one through. Late in the fourth, we're looking 1914. But can Roman Gabriel hit Jack Snow? And he does. Last minute touchdown reception by Jack Snow will push the Los Angeles Rams into the lead. 21 19. And the Rams overcome turnovers and rain and sloppy conditions to uh, come out with the victory in Kizar Stadium. And it's a tight one, 21-19 Rams over the Niners. Jack Snow's your MVP, 138 yards and a touchdown. And looking at the stats, you'd think, boy, San Francisco really just kind of owned this game. But uh, they did up until the final minutes of the fourth quarter where Roman Gabriel didn't turn the ball over and they actually got it in the end zone. Speaking of Roman Gabriel, 17-24, 267 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Los Angeles rushing Willie Ellison. He uh, had 48 yards on the ground and a touchdown. And receiving Jack Snow, your MVP, 138 yards and a touchdown. Billy Truax, 68 yards and a touchdown. Uh, that was that nice 56-yard catch and run where the uh, Niner defensive backs slipped in the uh, soggy turf of Kizar Stadium and allowed Truax to just walk into the end zone. Los Angeles total offense today, and they're coming from behind victory against the 49ers. On defense, uh, Myron Patios, uh, 12 tackles. Dyron Talbert, he got a sack. Deacon Jones showed up, sacked Tom, uh, uh, sacked Brody twice. Clancy Williams with the interception. Fearsome foursome were on the prowl today. David Ray, he only had extra points and he made all of them today. Not a busy day for Pat Studd, still only four punts. Heyman and Kermit Alexander returning kicks today. Same two uh, with punt returns today in the rain and the victory in uh, San Francisco. Now look at John Brody's numbers, 25 of 34, 281 yards, no touchdowns and interception, and he was sacked three times two. Those were uh, Deacon Jones. Not much on the ground uh, for the Niners. Willard got a uh, touchdown run. Uh, San Francisco receiving Dick Witcher 85 yards, Gene Washington 79, Preston Riley got 62 yards. Here's your San Francisco total offense numbers uh, in the rainy loss to the uh, Los Angeles Rams. So that's going to extend the Rams lead in the NFC West with this victory over the uh, Niners. San Francisco defense, uh, Skip Vanderbrunt, 10 tackles and a sack. Frank Nunley, he got a sack. Johnson and Phillips interceptions, and Dave Wilcox uh, scooped up the fumble. Bruce Gossett, perfect day in the rain for the San Francisco 49er kicker, who seems as, about as reliable as you could uh, get. Steve Spurrier only punted four times today. Longest was 41. Tucker and Taylor returning kicks. Uh, Tucker, longest one was 26 yards. Taylor had a 10 yard return and two fair catches. And with that, let's move on to our next game. That'll be 
the Battle of the Birds, Philly and St. Louis. And uh, we're in Bush Stadium. It's chilly. Not too windy. But uh, you've got the 8-2 uh, and two St. Louis Cardinals against the 2-8 and eight Philadelphia Eagles. This one looks to be uh, one-sided, but let's see uh, what happens when we look at the highlights. 13-14 in the first. Norm Sneed under center for the uh, Eagles. He passes, and he's picked off by Miller Farr. They uh, return it to the Philadelphia 49. So Jimmy Hart gets uh, the Cardinals down, and he runs it in. Quarterback sneak, and uh, gets that in. Touchdown, St. Louis. 3.43 now in the second. Hart back to pass. He's looking. He's got MacArthur Lane, and uh, MacArthur Lane does it again. 28-yard touchdown reception by MacArthur Lane. That'll put uh, St. Louis up 14-0. We're in the second quarter still, and uh, the receiver for the Eagles falls down. Easy interception for uh, Don Parrish, who returns it to the Philadelphia 32. Well, we have a fumble. So uh, Miller Farr picks off the pass and then he fumbles the ball. We're now in the fourth quarter. And, uh, oh no. Mark Mosley shanks that one. Don't know what happened there. Maybe, you know, bad hold. But uh, score is 14 nothing here. 13-30 uh, in the fourth. And uh, we've got a long pass play here. A long catch and run by the uh, Cardinals. And we got the touchdown. John Gilliam, 80-yard catch and run from Jim Hart. That extends it 21 to nothing. Can the Eagles get on the board? Nope. Uh, they just uh, throw another interception. Norman Sneed is picked off by Miller Farr again today. Jimmy Hart. And that looks like that's going to be it. So last uh, highlight. So we have the Eagles uh, putting up a goose egg, excuse the uh, pun, against the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals blow them out 21 nothing. Jimmy Hart is your MVP. Here's your game stats, and uh, as you can expect, it's just going to be dominance by the uh, Cardinals today against the Eagles. Rough day for the Eagles. Norm Sneed had a miserable day, 16-31, 159 yards, and four interceptions. That's uh, about a, as miserable of, of a day as you could get. Tom Wichnick had 64 yards on the ground. Otherwise, no one was really doing much uh, rushing the ball for Philadelphia. Receiving, uh, Wichnick and uh, Harold Jackson with 42 yards each. And the uh, total offense number is not much there to speak of for Philly and their uh, loss to the uh, Cardinals. Looking at Philly's defense, Ron Porter, seven tackles. Mel Tom, he got two sacks today. Uh, Holtz got a sack. Not much uh, went right for the Eagles today. Uh, Mosley, usually very uh, steady and reliable. He missed his only field goal attempt. Bill Bradley. Busy punting today because the offense couldn't get rolling. Wallach and Nelson returning kicks for the Eagles today in the loss. Wallach and Hawkins returning punts. Uh, fair, uh, fair catches and not much uh, of anything on uh, punt returns. With the Cardinals, big day for uh, Jim Hart. 11 of 18, 175 yards. Two touchdowns, great quarterback rating, good day for uh, Jim Hart.
MacArthur Lane, uh, Mr. Do-It-All for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. He got 48 yards on the ground rushing. Sid Edwards got uh, 57 in. Jim Hart scrambled uh, with that quarterback sneak, and he got the uh, lone touchdown on the ground. And receiving, uh, well, John Gilliam had an 81, 80 yard touchdown reception. MacArthur Lane, toss on uh, 31 yards uh, receiving to his numbers for the day. There's your total offense numbers for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals and their dominating win over the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles defense uh, bottled up, or uh, Cardinals defense uh, bottled the Eagles up. Uh, all day today. Chuck Walker got two sacks. Miller Farr picked off uh, Sneed three times. Don Parrish got another interception. Jim Bakken, uh, you only had to do uh, extra points today. LaTourette, uh, nine punts. Pittman and LaTourette uh, with kick returns. Only one kick return for 18 yards between the two. LaTourette, uh, three returns for uh, 23 yards on punts. Now we're at our final game. Giants and Redskins. RFK Stadium. A little bit of wind. Let's go to those highlights. 10-22 in the first, Sonny Jurgensen. Back to pass for the Redskins, he looks. And uh, throws an interception. Giants pick it off and return it to the Washington 27. 7-41 in the first, Gogolak splits the uprights to give the Giants a three to nothing lead. 741 in the first quarter. We're in the second quarter now. Tarkington hands off to Ron Johnson. Short touchdown run for Ron Johnson will uh, add to the uh, point total for New York. 10 nothing New York. Still in the second. Tarkington back to pass and he is picked off by Harold McClinton. That'll stop that drive. We're now in the third. 925. Kurt Knight will get Washington on the board. 10-3 New York in the third quarter. Tarkington, he's got uh, the Giants down on the uh, eight, and he hits uh, Herman in the end zone. Eight-yard touchdown pass, Fran Tarkington to Don Herman. That puts uh, the New York Giants up 17-3. Here we are in the fourth, and Ron Johnson runs it in from three yards to uh, add to that total. 24-3 now in the uh, fourth quarter. Jurgensen uh, has the uh, Redskins knocking on the door, and he finds uh, the veteran Charlie Taylor for a 20-yard touchdown pass. Your score is 24-10 late in the fourth. And that will end up being your final score on our last game of uh, the week. The Giants go into RFK and come out with a 24-10 victory over the Washington Redskins. Ron Johnson is your MVP. The Giants uh, halfback, 114 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Uh, he... Caught a pass for 15 yards and actually completed a 27-yard halfback pass. All right. Here's your final game stats. And, uh, yeah, long day for, uh, for Washington. Fran Tarkington's day, 9 of 17, 76 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Not a great day for Fran, but uh, didn't have to be a great day for him with the way Ron Johnson was running the ball. Speaking of Ron Johnson, 114 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Tucker Fredrickson, the fullback, he had 59 yards. 
Clifton McNeil, seven catches for 73 yards. Don Herman, uh, only single catch of the day was that eight-yard touchdown. And there's your uh, total offense for the uh, New York Giants and their victory on the road against the Washington Redskins. New York's defense. Well, Fred Dreyer adds to his sack total with two. Jim Files had a uh, interception. Hazeltine and Douglas each uh, six tackles. Pete Gogolak. He didn't miss anything today. So good day for the uh, soccer style kicking Pete Gogolak. He was one of the, he was the first soccer style kicker uh, in the NFL, originally started in the AFL. Uh, but most of your kickers in the uh, 70s, in the early 70s, uh, were straight on kickers. So he was a little bit of a anomaly in Jan Stenerud. Bill Johnson, only four punts for the Giants today. Les Shy and Bobby Duhon. Uh, Leshai had one kick return for 23 yards. Uh, Duhan, three fair catches uh, in punt return duties today. Sonny Jerkinson's day for the Redskins, 19 to 29, 195 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Was sacked twice by uh, Freddie Dreyer. Not much on the ground for. Uh, Washington, Sonny Jurgensen was under pressure a lot, so he uh, was scrambling around a bit. Receiving, 56 yards for Walter Roberts. Charlie Taylor, the veteran, gets 49 yards receiving and a touchdown. Here's your total offense numbers for the uh, Redskins and their loss at home to the New York Giants. Washington defense, they were uh, they were busy today. Chris Hanberger, 12 tackles. No, no sacks, one interception. Kurt Knight, uh, good on field goal, good on extra point. It was good when he was called upon. Mike Bragg, six punts. Uh, Harrison Vactor, each one had uh, a, a kick return of 29 yards. Uh, Ricky Harris, only uh, one return for a yard and two fair catches uh, returning punts. And that wraps up week 11. So let's uh, head on back and we can look and uh, see what the standings look like. Not know why the mouse is jumping around here, but uh, I'll figure that out. I apologize for that. Uh, so looking at the standings now, going into week 12, St. Louis, uh, they are nine and two and are uh, have the best record in football and are handily ahead of the New York Giants, who are at uh, seven and four. Minnesota, sole occupier of first in the NFC Central. And Los Angeles gains uh, quite a bit of ground on the, uh, well, actually they uh, get a great bit of ground between them and the second place uh, 49ers in the NFC West. Looking at the AFC East, we have a tie between Baltimore and Miami. New York is sinking in the standings. Boston and New Orleans uh, only one one win. Looking in the central, uh, it's tightening up between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. And in the AFC West, Oakland keeps pace uh, with Kansas City. Denver is still kind of in the hunt there.
So that'll end uh, week 11. So uh, look forward to watching uh, week 12 highlights here soon. Again, uh, please like and subscribe. Leave some comments. Would love to hear from you guys on uh, what you think of the series so far. Um, thoughts. Uh, your memories of uh, the 1970 season or even football in the 1970s. Would, uh, again, really like to hear from you guys. And with that, I'll see you at uh, week 12.